where she is a consultant in GI and nutrition. She's director of the Celiac Disease Clinic at McMaster University and also provides nutrition support with the Home Parental Nutrition Program and Intestinal Failure Clinics. Her clinical and research interests include the diagnosis and treatment of different GI conditions with a focus on celiac disease and gluten-related disorders. And her presentation today is on micronutrient deficiencies. Are you getting enough? So uh, it's my pleasure now to hand over to Ines and uh, to hear what she has to say about micronutrient deficiencies in celiac disease. Thank you very much, David, and the organizer for inviting me, you know, to talk, discuss this fantastic and very highly relevant topic. I don't know, my, my video is mute, is, is off, but probably it's better. <laughs> so um, can you see my screen there? Yes, yes, we can yes. see the screen. Okay, fantastic. So let me so uh, let me go uh, to what we have planned for this fifteen uh, minutes. Um, we will discuss background in what are the known nutrient deficiencies in celiac disease and um, what is our experience in assessing these nutrient deficiencies. Um, the studies coming from our clinic as well, and what it is recommended. Uh, there are variations in recommendations, and we will discuss that uh, in detail. So the reason why I said that this is important is because we all know that celiac disease is, uh, is associated with several nutritional deficiencies, and this makes sense when the celiac disease is active. So at the moment of diagnosis, when the gut is inflamed, of course, it's, it, that can explain nutritional deficiencies. Many of these nutrients are absorbed in the duodenum, which is the area that is affected in celiac. How, and, however, what we are seeing is that nutrient deficiencies ha, are not limited to people with uh, celiac disease uh, when the disease is active. It seems after that. And this it could be related to the fact that uh, uh, at the moment of diagnosis, people are starting a gluten-free diet, which could be uh, associated with some deficiencies and removals and nutrients that are relevant for uh, our health. And that's why it's so important that um, a, a patient with celiac disease uh, is monitored for nutrition by the uh, healthcare team and they receive dietary counseling, not only in how to adopt a very strict diet, but also how to monitor nutrients in their diet. So there are many, many studies, and I will show that later, but this is one of them summarizing um, what is, in average, a gluten-free diet lacking an excess. There are some deficiencies described on zinc, magnesium, magnesium, iron, calcium, folate, and fiber, and excess in saturated fats, lipids, Carbo simple carbohydrates, sodium, sugar, and calories, which could explain the results that Don uh, has presented before um, related to changes in weight. And this is why, because of these alterations and deficiencies and excess in diet, um, a dietitian has a crucial role in, in the uh, assessment and monitoring of celiac disease. So coming to our second point, what are the most frequent nutritional deficiencies in celiac disease? Well, when we say nutrition or nutrients, we are referring to both macronutrients and micronutrients. And that's why we should be very specific when we uh, ask this question. Macronutrients, as you said, uh, involves carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. So the, one of the most concerning macronutrients that has been uh, associated or, or seen um, low in, in gluten-free diet is fiber. And that's why it's, it's very important to uh, assess this macronutrient. You, as you, everyone knows, fiber is important for preventing constipation and has been associated with decreased risk of uh, relevant uh, conditions such as colon cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. And that's why um, it's so important that we uh, people with celiac disease ensure a consumption of a, an adequate amount of fiber. And, um, and which is sometimes challenging when people start with a free diet because wheat is a very good source of fiber. So um, that was from the macronutrients uh, and from a micronutrients perspective, which I said that it says vitamins and minerals, iron is one of the most common minerals that is being seen low in C legacies. But iron deficiency has been seen more frequently in people with active celiac disease. And this is because iron is primarily absorbed in the duodenum, which is the area that is most affected in celiac. In fact, people at the diagnosis of celiac 
28 to 50 percent of them have iron deficiency. And this is important as uh, people may or may not feel it, but uh, usually after starting the gluten free diet, the iron deficiency, the, the, the gut is start healing and the iron deficiency improve. But sometimes it requires additional supplementation. And that's why it's important to monitor, assess, and discuss this with, with your healthcare provider and dietitian. And in addition to that, uh, gluten free products, some, there are some studies showing that uh, may contain less iron than gluten containing products. And that may contribute to the deficiency in the follow up. And that's why in the follow up, some people with celiac may persist with iron deficiency within other reasons. Another important mineral is um, zinc. Zinc is one of the minerals that uh, has been uh, seen low in people with celiac disease, not only at the moment of diagnosis, but also is one of the most common mineral deficiencies in the follow up. And of course, this is related because of reduced absorption um, when the inflammation is pre present, but also it's a tricky uh, a mineral because other food can interact with absorption of zinc. So that's why it's very, very commonly low and it's important to check and monitor in this, no, this mineral. Selenium is also another uh, nutrient that is low, uh, that has been low in people at the moment of diagnosis and also in the follow up. Copper, there are some studies showing copper deficiency in people with celiac disease, as well as magnesium. Um, magnesium is usually uh, less, uh, less uh, abundant in, in gluten free products, and that may contribute some magnesium deficiency in uh, people uh, on a gluten free diet, but it's not as frequent as what we see uh, in terms of zinc. So when someone with celiac has anemia, um, immediately uh, is associated with iron. However, there may be other reasons that lead to anemia. And we need to remember that folate of vitamin B12 can contribute to this. In terms of folate, which is a one vitamin, one of the vitamins, um, that is primarily absorbed in the jejunum, which is affected in celiac disease. And the, the deficiency, the, the, the frequency of the deficiency is highly variable in people with celiac. It could, as you will see there, in studies described between 10 and 85 percent. It's a highly, highly variable, and this will depend on absorption, but also on diet. And, and this is because, again, gluten free food are known to have a, a less folate in general compared to gluten containing products. So B12, B12 is one of the nutrients that is absorbed in the very, very last part of the small bowel. It is not very frequently seen low in people with celiac disease because the last part of the bowel is less affected than celiac, but it's seen in some, in, in, in some of these patients, probably related to dietary intake as well. Uh, other vitamins are not as uh, prevalent, as not as frequent deficiency as, uh, as what I mentioned before. So there are many of the study, many, many of these studies showing deficiencies with different results. Um, as you will see, I will show you this of three, three of the studies. Just I don't expect you to read all of them, but just as an example of how variable are the reporting on nutrient deficiencies. And that will depend on the population assessed, the diet. So there are many factors involved in these studies. And, um, and not only in these uh, vitamins and minerals that I show you, but also there were other uh, deficiencies, for example, vitamin E that is shown in one of the, um, of the studies, uh, which has been, con has been controverted in others. And because of this, because of these controversies and, and these different reports in all these studies, in, in our uh, group, uh, we have uh, tried to pull all this information available and perform a systematic review as, as Don showed some results of previous reviews for a nutrition assessment, we did that for nutrients. And basically what systematic review means is that we design a protocol, we set up criteria, and we look all the studies available meeting that criteria. And then we pull these studies, and as you will see here, study one, two, three, four, the effect if the nutrient is high or low, has been balanced in these studies and put in kind of a weight scale. And that, that um, diamond is showing whether there is an effect or there is not an effect, whether the line goes on the right or the left of the zero. So we did this systematic review and set up a specific criteria methods. We found five over 5,000 studies. 
but not all of them met the criteria. Only 41 met the criteria that we set up of the nutrient deficiencies. So we pulled all these studies in the review and 21 of them we were able to extract data for the analysis, as, as you will see here, which is called the meta-analysis. And what we found is that um, celiac disease uh, has, yes, many nutrient deficiencies that, uh, as shown in the literature, particularly and more frequently iron, vitamin D and vitamin E. That is when the celiac has been at the, dino, at, at the moment of diagnosis. So, and um, these deficiencies, some of the deficiencies, they improve on a gluten-free diet, whether others remain. However, there is still some of the, there are some, some uh, bias related to these studies, some error, possible errors. So then it's important to continue working in uh, improving the evidence of micronutrients in celiac. So, in our clinic, in our, uh, uh, we, we have set up a registry and people, uh, our patients have, many of our patients have signed up uh, to the registry and this has allowed us to, to estimate and to, um, to evaluate uh, the rate of nutrient deficiencies. So what we were seeing, I'm very surprised, is that 63% of our patients have nutrient deficiencies when they are adopting a gluten-free diet. And the, you know, our patients, many of them are doing the diet like a very, very good, and they have been on gluten-free diet for years and still remain with nutrient deficiencies. The most common deficiency, as you will see here, is zinc, uh, followed by vitamin D, iron, copper, and selenium. So these, we were able to identify these deficiencies, and that's why it's very important to continue monitoring these deficiencies. What we were seeing in our, in our data also is that the nutrient deficiencies were similar in patients on the short-term or long-term gluten-free diet. So independently of how long people have been following the diet, these deficiencies are there present, suggesting that these uh, nutritional deficiencies are more related to the gluten-free diet or to the dietary itself than uh, the celiac disease activity. So, Having all I show you what, uh, trying to summarize in 10 minutes what the information is out there about nutrient, but what are the current recommendations on how to monitor nutrition in celiac? So there are many, many guidelines uh, published uh, in celiac disease. I'm showing here a summary of, of uh, the guidelines that, that uh, were published until 2019. And as you will see here in this where the nutritional recommendations, some guidelines recommend to monitor every three months, other every three, six months, and then annually. So the recommendations are non-consistent. So what we are doing in our clinic is go is, is recommending as, as what the majority goes is to test nutrients at baseline. At the moment, we see the patient for the first time and then to follow annually uh, if there are no uh, other deficiencies, and then if there is a deficiency identified, so then we suggest um, uh, recommendations to supplement the deficiency, and then we check again for six months, as some of the guidelines recommend. So, the, the, what I wanted to bring this is that these recommendations are uh, after an important nutrition assessment and don't show. Um, and then identifying based on the blood work, based on weight, based, based on uh, clinical, based on bone health. So we make all these recommendations and that was it's very important, a multidisciplinary approach. And here in the multidisciplinary, the role of dietitian is crucial. And what we are saying about multidisciplinary approach, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, discussing what needs to be done to monitor nutrition. Usually the way uh, that, uh, is, is, is required is that to review blood work and other clinical measures and also to have assess a very carefully screen for gluten exposure because maintaining this activity can increase or in, uh, impair nutrition malnutrition and uh, we need to monitor this quality of diet and nutrient intake and that's why it's very important that physicians dietitians collaborating to determine what is the best supplementation recommendations of diet what is the most appropriate for our patients and we need to develop, rather than global recommendations, individualized recommendations based on the patient itself and all the clinical background to help them meet nutritional needs. We need to monitor these nutritional deficiencies to be able to identify uh, early on and, and treat appropriately and to prevent complications related to malnutrition, for example, bone disease. That I'm very, very glad and happy that I work with 
a fantastic uh, team, in, you know, with David Armstrong uh, um, in this nutrition initiative, and also with fantastic dietitian uh, Jadid and Jane, who are providing care of our uh, uh, celiac patients in the clinic. So just to summarize, uh, nutritional deficiencies are common seen in celiac disease. Um, and malabs at the beginning, uh, when the celiac is active, malabsorption can justify that, but we are seeing the deficiencies in the follow-up, and this could be related to the nutritional adequacy, adequacy or the quality of the gluten-free diet. So the most common deficiencies are iron, zinc, folate, copper, vitamin D, and that's important, but because we are seeing these deficiencies throughout uh, the condition, so it's measure nutrients in patients at the diagnosis and on gluten-free diet. And then what what is recommended usually is to supplement these nutritional deficiencies rather than uh, being proactively and giving nutrients without knowing what is going on. And that is very, very important. It's possible, if available, to uh, always involve a dietitian to provide a, a multidisciplinary assessment and recommendations on a gluten-free diet. So from gluten-free diet to proper nutrition, there are many, many different roads. And uh, from a uh, Celiac uh, perspective and our uh, clinic is, you know, committed uh, partnering with the Canadian Association to help providing uh, advice as well when it's needed. So just to uh, let you know before I finish, uh, there is we're doing a, a workshop um, uh, on December the 6th, so you can click if you want to attend. Uh, we are doing this series of workshops to educate and continue uh, providing education to our patients. Thank you very much uh, for um, for allowing me to, to present, and I'm open for questions at the end.